Welcome to the side of my CNC machine. Today I am going to talk about a comment that was in the YouTube comments that I definitely read. It was a really good one actually, it got me thinking. The comment was, which is going to be better? If I run a 1000 kV motor at, let's say 20 to one gear down, or if I run a 2000 kV motor at twice that gear down, whatever I said, twice that, so 40 to one gear down, which is gonna give me better performance. So I figured I would basically show you the math and let's get to it. So if you're a longtime follower or if you knew me back in the RC crawler days when that was a hopping forum, you would know that my slogan has always been volt up, gear down. For best performance in a crawler, you wanna spin your motor fast and you want lots of gear down. So these days we run really high KV motors a lot of times and you, you may not always wanna volt up. Back then we were mostly running like a uh, six cell nickel metal hydride, so 7.4 volts. So volting up was either gonna mean running uh, you know, an 11 volt or running a three cell LiPo or even a four cell LiPo. And back in the day, we were probably gonna be running a 55 turn motor, equivalent to an 1000 kV uh, outrunner, inrunner, doesn't matter, about 1000 kV for a 55 turn motor. So back then, the thought was volt up, gear down, get more wheel speed, use more gear reduction in your system and you will get lots of benefits. I wanna show you this using an 1800 kV Puller Pro uh, 540 size, not the stubby, and a 3500, which is pretty much twice the speed of the 1800 kV Puller Pro. I went ahead and used this Kelvin wire resistance setup. Uh, so you pass a certain voltage, or uh, technically what I did is I passed exactly one amp through the resistance of the motor, and then I used a secondary set of meter leads to get the voltage drop on that. And that voltage drop, if you're passing one amp through there, will give you the resistance in milliohms. So this is the Kelvin wire test, you can look it up. This is an extremely accurate way to measure very, very low uh, resistances of materials. So uh, it doesn't need expensive equipment, but you would need some way to actively either measure or push exactly one amp or 10 amps or you know whatever amps. And then you just do the Ohm's law here to work it all out. But it's really easy if you've got a, a one or a 10 in this amperage here. So voltage is equal to amps times resistance. That's Ohm's law there. And you can rearrange it using math however you want to. But essentially the one amp and the resistance can get us to the voltage here. And I know my voltage using the Kelvin wire setup. We know our amperage and that allowed me to essentially do one of these numbers. Um, I is equal to one. Uh, so we can say one is equal to voltage divided by resistance. If we know that uh, our volts are passing, you know, it would be, let's say like 0 0.007 up there. And then, or, or yeah, 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 there we go. Uh, we can move this over to that side. You know how to do math, I'm sure. So that is equal to that, marks that out, uh, move it over to the other side. There, there's uh, you know, a simplified method, uh, a very poor explanation about how to do the math to figure out the resistance of something using the Kelvin wire method and Ohm's law. So what did we get? Uh, the resistance of our 1800 kV motor is uh, 0.028 ohms or 28 milli ohms and our 3500 kV motor measured out to 0.007 ohms or 7 milli ohms. Now you may be thinking to yourself why would a motor that's twice the speed we can just make the assumption here that this is a 3600 kV motor uh, because it is basically twice the speed. Why is the motor that's twice as fast four times less resistance? A lot of people ask and you know, say, so, well that doesn't make sense w wouldn't you be able to uh, you know get a, some sort of performance advantage because of this. But if you think about it, we have twice the number of turns for the 1800 kV motor. That means that we're also using a, a strand of wire that is twice as thin, which means that our total resistance twice as long plus twice as thin is actually four times different on the resistance of our motors. Now I could actually run backwards through the heat generated and show you that for any given wattage load or torque load that both of these motors will actually run at the same heat. There's no more or less loss. A motor is a motor is a motor. So this actually works out because uh, amperage or heat is the square of our amperage and it cancels out the fact that these are essentially, you know, it's, it's related to each other. 
Uh, I'm already getting deep into the weeds on this, not the math that I was trying to show you today. Okay, volt up, gear down. Volt up, gear down. <laughs> uh, all right, so what we're gonna do is run through two different scenarios with these motors, assuming that we have 10 volts being applied to them. This is our resistance, and then we're gonna figure out the actual torque of it, and then talk about what happens when you gear it down. So. Uh, what is our amperage going to be if we have 10 volts and our resistance is 0.28? We do the math over here. Volt is equal to I times R. So what we want to do is solve for I. Uh, I is equal to R divided by volts. We know that our volts are 10, so we're solving for that. We know that our resistance on this top one is 0.02. Eight. So 0 0.028 divided by 10. Oh, actually, I can just move this over. Couldn't I just move this over one? Is that the, is that the easy way? Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. So uh, boop right there. And then uh, we mark that guy out right there. And I'm pretty sure our amperage is going to be 0.28 amps. It seems like it should be, uh, you know, 2.8 Maybe I'm doing this wrong. Let me double check on my fancy calculator watch because evidently I can't move decimal places in my head anymore. So uh, here we go, decimal point, decimal point, decimal point. I think that was the decimal point, point uh, zero two eight. We're gonna divide that by 10. I am not happy that I'm having to do this to check it on a calculator watch. Uh, that worked in the wrong direction. What did I do wrong? Did I, did I do, uh, uh, yeah, I flipped that around. That's why you always check your math. I was like, this, this isn't, this isn't right. Uh, so I is equal to voltage over resistance. Yeah, I, I flipped both sides at the same time. That wasn't cool. So 10 divided by 0.028. There we go. Everybody makes mistakes in life. So let's run that once more again. We're going to do 10. <laughs> I can hear the camera divided by uh, point zero two eight. I should totally be able to do this in my head anyways, but uh, there we go. Calculator watch. 357 amps. Uh, honestly, you know, doing a straight voltage to the motor like that is going to be nuts anyway. So that this actually makes much more sense. All right. So 300 and... Uh, 57 amps. Obviously, we're going to be weighing the saturation in this sort of thing. You can't just drop 10 volts onto a brushless motor and expect the situation to be happy. We're also going to have the resistance of the battery and the resistance of the ESC and the resistance of the wires in between. So this is a really simplified version. But there we go, 357 amps. Now let's do the same for our other equation. We're going to do 10 divided by... <laughs> <laughs> the camera noise. I didn't know that it made noise on the inside point zero zero seven and that should be Yes, fourteen hundred and twenty eight amps fourteen hundred twenty eight amps uh, th These are real numbers that would happen if you could actually push 10 volts directly into your motor. So this lets you know why it's a really, really bad idea when you get bound down to just grab a whole bunch of throttle because your system will try to do this. It may not get quite up here because of things I shouldn't mention right now, but this shows you how crazy getting a brushless motor bound down into a situation can get. All right, so um, if we're loaded all the way down like this, technically our RPM is going to be at zero. So we're, we're going to ignore this RPM column. And what we're going to do now is focus on torque. We're going to use our 1800 kV as our uh, steady case. So our torque value is going to be one to one amps to torque output. The formula for torque output is a completely different one, but it is a linear relationship. Now, for twice the kV, I can tell you because of this formula that it will be half of our amperage here. So again, I'm, I'm going to get into the weeds. Uh, so this is going to be 357, let's just call it units of torque. I divide, because this is twice the speed, we only get half the torque for the same amperage. So I'm going to divide that 1428 divided by 2. And that's going to get 714. Hmm. Do you notice anything about these numbers? This is the real world of what it could do. 
our faster motor is producing more torque and it would technically have more wheel speed too. The old adage about slow motors producing more torque, lower KV producing more torque, it's not really true until you get into, you know, your ESC, can your battery handle it, can your wires handle it, all of that. Faster motors actually do produce more torque when we're talking about brushless uh, until other things get into saturation or the motor gets into saturation, et cetera. Okay, so let's assume that our, our uh, gearing is actually the same between the two vehicles. These would just move right over. You know, if we have 20 units of gear down, then you'd multiply that by 20, multiply that by 20, there you go. Uh, let's just do like 10 for sake of argument um, at 10 to one, 10 to one, so it would be 357 units of torque. This would be 714 units of torque. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to add the zeros. Uh, 3,570 units of torque, 7,140 units of torque. Again, the faster motor has produced twice the amount of torque potentially in this ideal world. Now, what happens if we double our gear down? All right, so we get to double that. Hey, uh, these are the same things. So this number can actually move here because we doubled our gear down, but this number also doubles, uh, which brings us back to the original number. There we go. It's nice when you use like tens and stuff like that. It's uh, easy to do the math and easy to pick out when you do a problem wrong. All right, so we doubled our gear down and now you can see that uh, we're still producing the twice amount of torque with our faster motor. Now, what, 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 where's the, you know, where's the come together of all of this information? If you're using a motor that is half the speed with half the amount of gear down to get the same wheel speed, these are the two numbers that are actually going to interest you. Is this supposed you. to be 14,280? Uh, uh, am I missing a zero? Uh, la, 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 la. Yeah, uh, sorry. There we go. Thank you. Twice the number. <laughs> now we're back on track. So um, as you can see, between these two, we're actually getting a whole lot more torque from our faster motor geared down, which is the same as putting more voltage to a motor and then gearing back down. We're getting considerably more torque at the wheel by using a faster motor with more gear down, 20 to one versus 10 to one using the slower motor. Now, both of these situations are actually gonna have the same amount of wheel speed, but you're gonna get a lot more torque potential from this faster motor with twice the amount of gear down. On top of that, between the torque potential you're also going to have your motor spinning twice as fast for any wheel speed. So at really low speeds, you're actually going to have a lot better low speed control. Your drag brake, the drag brake of a motor doesn't actually change when you short it down. Uh, so if you if you got twice the gear reduction, your drag brake actually goes up two times as well. So for any given load, you are, you're going to have twice the amount of torque that you can easily produce via drag brake, but you could have four times the amount of torque if you want to, you know, punch a little amperage into it. And if you can imagine rolling over an object, not changing your finger on the trigger, what's going to happen to it? Your voltage actually hasn't changed, but this motor, especially if you gear down more, the faster motor, if you gear down more, is going to have so much more torque potential that it's not even going to feel that small change of load as you go up. And we're, we're probably just going to have to go onto the rocks one day and show you this in action. But suffice it to say that your faster motor with more gear down is going to produce a lot more consistent results on the rock. You're going to have better low speed control. You're going to have better control under load. You're going to have twice the amount of drag brake in this sort of case, and you're gonna have four times the amount of torque being able to produce at the wheel. That should be four. Let's, uh, let's just check it out, just to make sure we haven't made any mistakes. Boom, and we're gonna divide that by the other number. 35, oh, did it wrong, did it wrong. Is there no clear on this? Nope, there's no clear. All right, so we'll try again. Uh, let's just let's just do round. Uh, oh, never mind. I'm already into it. No round numbers. We're gonna divide that by thirty-five, seventy. It's exactly four, as I thought. Uh, I'm not good at, at uh, this sort of math, <laughs> evidently. But uh, there. This is why. I say volt up, gear down, or in this case, KV up and gear down. Uh, so you can ignore volt up, gear down. You're probably already running the voltage that you want. But if you want 
more torque. You want better low speed control. You want better drag brake. Let's say your, your rig is getting heavy and you, you, your drag brake just isn't cutting it anymore. It doesn't matter what sort of control your system is using, whether it's FOC, whether it's normal brushless, where it's a brushed motor, it really doesn't matter on any of this. If you want that performance gain, then you always want to choose having more gear down as long as you can gear down more and use your faster motor, then bam. I mean, that's really the, that's the number that we want to look at right there. So they're, they're, there really is no downside until you get to the point that you're spinning your motor like 50 or 60,000 RPM to the point to where you're running into switching losses. And that's, you know, a completely different video. It's like, if you get out of the Goldilocks zone of running any system, you're going to have problems. But while you're still running, you know, th this uh, 10 volts or let's just say 11 volts or whatever, that's running, you know, like 37, 38,000 RPM. That's well within the range of a four pole on any system. And so you're not going to have any problems at all doing this sort. So, to summarize all of this, volt up, gear down, or if you're already running the voltage that you want to, KV up and gear down if you want to get better torque, better low speed control, better drag brake, better everything, to tell you the truth, in a crawler. And that is that. So if you got any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I do read them all, even if I don't respond to them. But if you got some good technical questions, I love to respond to those. So as always, thanks for tuning in. I hope this wasn't too big of a tech hit over your head and have a great day.